Hey guys, welcome back to another 1.19 Skyblock episode. So in the last episode we managed to design the Potsol dirt farm in creative, but couldn't build it right away because there was a shortage. Or we don't have any honey blocks yet. We need a couple stacks of those in order to build the farm. So the plan for the day is now to get some bees first, then design a honey and honeycomb farm in creative. Nothing super large. I was thinking maybe 16 beehives or something in that range. So just to get enough honey blocks for, for yeah, the builds we need now. And yeah, then also build it in survival. Okay, so let's get started. So in order to get bees in Skyblock, um, we need to grow trees next to a flower and then there's a small chance of a bee nest right next to it. So we can either use oak or birch trees for this. And also, the oh yeah, true, the, the mangrove trees is also another possibility to get uh, bee nest blocks with bees inside. But I would definitely prefer the birch trees because there's no chance to get a tall um, oak tree. And also the, the mangrove trees are kind of huge. Uh, would be quite some effort to yeah, grow those right now. So I'm going to take the birch saplings. Um, probably also need a couple of dirt or pot salt blocks. They're really short on that. Probably some dirt still around um, next to the warning trader platform. But I think nine pots of blocks should be enough. We definitely need to worry about getting enough saplings back from the leaf decaying. So we can't just continuously grow trees without having to worry about that. So a, a fortune hope would actually be nice. I don't think I made one yet. But we, get we got 93 levels. So no problem. We can just run over and, and buy the books for that. All right. Um, then a couple bone blocks would be need for bone meal. And... A flower. Um, I can definitely get poppies from the iron farm, but there might be a chance that I got a couple of flowers already in the chest uh, next to the yeah, the old setup we had for the passive mob spawning. I was pretty sure I bow milled that by accident once and, and collected some flowers from there. So I need um, one flower within the 5x5 five five area around the sapling. Yep, to have a chance to get a Bee nest. And there we go. We only need one flower, I think. Yep. There's also 23 grass blocks in case we need more. Although we should probably keep some in the chest in case something goes wrong. Maybe a couple of building blocks would be neat. We we'll just place the, the pots right here on the slabs. Uh, it would be a bit too high. Maybe if we make a, a platform. Um, could be a grass block platform or glass blocks would also be okay. Okay, let's see. I have a hoe. Oh, there's actually a fortune hoe. I made one already. Sweet. Okay. But this way we even have a higher chance, I think, to, to get saplings. And... Yeah, we can instamine the leaves, of course. It doesn't take that long. Okay, so my plan would be to... Yeah, create an area. We have maybe four spaces for... Yeah, trees and one for the flower in the middle. Okay, so the five by five around this would be fine. So maybe make this a bit larger here so the saplings don't fall down. Gra uh, glass is actually the worst building block because I can't insta mine and remove it again later. But it's okay. Okay, then. Yeah, that would be the spot for the next pot saw block. Here's one. And there we go. This will be definitely be removed. This looks awful. <laughs> As you can see, I'm really not into building it. But I would love to actually yeah, make a little park or something on the side. We could grow the trees. I'm really lacking uh, building blocks left and right. I'm, I'm not really into to building that much. I'm also not good at it. But there's sometimes I have the urge uh, to decorate some of the builds. Right now, everything is just functional. But then I always quickly remind it, hey, I don't have this block yet and, and don't have grass yet. Um, all my, my ideas wouldn't work for, for decorational projects. And so I'm not really into building. It's also for me not that um, yeah, much of a... Um, or well, something interesting to have a lack of building blocks and, and um, like similar to have a, a lack of redstone components, which could be quite interesting. But I'm already struggling with building and then even have a lack of that stuff. And it makes it ex just extra hard for me and it's not really that motivating. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> this should be okay. We can definitely grow the trees here. So let's see if we get a bee nest right away. Um, should maybe even get my... 
Oh, there's the X. I have it. Okay. I have the X on me. Never mind. Oh. Let's see if you get one right away. Nope. Ah, there. <laughs> we already got one. Okay. Let's quickly mine this. Do I have the... the is a way to actually check how many bees are inside, um, which is quite handy, which is not a vanilla feature of items, not item scroller, um, mini hut. There's a way to show this. Uh, I'm gonna try to figure that out. Found it. So in the mini hut config in generic, there's bee tool tips which we can enable. Um, so adds the number of contained bees to the tooltip of beehive and bee nest items. So those other features like axolotl tooltips, adds the axolotl variant to the bucket tooltip or honey tooltip, adds the honey level to the tooltip of the bee nest items. So that, that's, that's quite handy. All right, um, so let's see. Contains three bees. So as far as I know, a bee nest when, gen when it's generating, um, either has two or three bees. But I, I might actually be wrong on this. Sometimes the bee also exits the hive right away. Okay, so we got three bees now. I was thinking this went pretty smooth so far. We got the setup. Should we maybe try to get a couple more? I could also yeah, actually need some birch locks anyway. So we can also finish the decoration of the, the villager trading setup. I feel like um, we don't need to get any more villagers here right away. So we can get rid of this little checking station here. Uh, yeah, which we use to, to select certain villagers. Yeah. Then at least this area would also look cleaner if once all the rails are removed and so on. Okay, then I'm just gonna yeah, grow a couple more birch trees so we can get a couple more hives as well. Oh no, so I actually got a second bee nest block, but I didn't notice it right away, so the, the bees exited the hive. And we have the same issue as with the LA, so it seems like all flying mobs here below, why? Minus 64, Y0 in the nether, they get stuck. So now we can actually try, yeah, the fishing rod in order to try to rescue this guy. I'm gonna run over and get one. Ah, this works! Nice. Right. Oh, the second bee also got caught in the void. It's actually quite fun. Oh, it's going down again. Somebody can probably make a mini game out of this. Okay, some bee fishing. Um, it's taking off. So the first bee already tried to pollinate the flower there, and then went back into the hive. And this one goes right in straight away. Okay, there's also a feature that you can check um, how many bees are inside of the hive using mini hut as well. So there's also an info line feature, info bee count. Show the number of bees in a targeted hive or nest. I feel like this should also be something you have in vanilla. Why the uncertainty how many bees you have? Um, don't think this is really something that adds to the game really. So I feel like it would be nice to have this in vanilla as well somehow. Alright, uh, so I placed a block in front. Bees can't exit and I can just mine it. Now we got five bees. We got one and a half stacks of birch locks already. This is definitely enough to... Yeah, finish the decoration of the, the villager trading setup. So I'm gonna do this now. All right, there we go. So this looks a bit cleaner again. Okay, now we're actually gonna do some trading, get a bit more redstone. We're gonna need that for the honey farm later. Also, in case you're interested, the last villager here that wasn't assigned correctly to the brewing stand is assigned correctly now. So this sorted itself out. Um, so it seems like after maybe an hour or so, the villagers check again if they can reach their brewing stand or workstation. And then maybe the one guy that they took the wrong brewing stand, which was diagonal from him, lost it. And then the other one had the chance to take it. So yeah, this is actually quite convenient. In case you have issues with villagers initially not taking the workstation right next to them, you can just wait apparently. So I moved some of the anvils here in front because it looked a bit plain. Yeah, now we also got some anvils to combine our books and the tools and it yeah, breaks it up a little bit. All right, so as I was saying earlier, I would definitely like to do a bit more decoration, but I was always just lacking blocks and I feel like once we have dirt blocks, uh, then we can really do some stuff. Um, so a couple episodes from now, as I said, main storage will be built in a, yeah, a decorated setup. So that, that was the plan all along and I definitely need some grass blocks for that. So there will also be a setup that 
you need to make in order to convert the dirt into grass blocks. So my idea would have been that we have a setup where I can place down the dirt. It gets pushed through a certain configuration. We have a lot of grass blocks around where the grass can spread to the dirt. And then we yeah, either do something with dual wielding, push the blocks back in front of the player, or even try to use Enderman to pick up the grass blocks and get them in item form this way. So this is definitely a bit more challenging in single player, unlike on a server where you could just have a second player mining the grass blocks. Uh, so a couple of episodes from now, that's definitely one of the yeah, projects I'm also really looking forward to. I've never done really anything with Enderman picking up blocks, because so far it was just never really necessary, but a single player is also a bit more challenging, I feel like. But now let's continue with the bees. So I'll definitely need a couple more bees for the bee farm later. And I also need honeycomb to be able to craft beehives. Okay, I was thinking maybe let's just use this platform here to make some sort of enclosure so we can breed the bees inside without them escaping. Let's just make it like three high and add one door. So this should be okay. Okay, so it's really not much of a setup, but at least it should get the job done. Okay, yeah, this will also involve a lot of waiting. I think I could maybe already go to the creative world and yeah, try to work on the honey farm. All right, so honey or honeycomb farm, definitely one of the simplest farms in the game. But we want to spice it up a little bit, add some extra complexity, but we'll also get some functionality from that. Okay, so this is a simple setup. We just need a one by one by one enclosure. So the bee stays inside and goes back into the hive. The, yeah, the smaller you make it, the better. So there's really no advantage of making a bigger enclosure in front. Okay, here we can use the flowering azalea leaf. It has the advantage over some dirt and a flower on top. You could also use that we can still put a fence gate in front. This acts as an off switch, so we can keep the bees inside if you want to. If this is closed, then a bee can't exit the hive anymore, and if you power it, then a bee can exit again. Okay, so this is just a simple setup here. Once the beehive reaches a honey level of five, we also get a redstone level of five here. In any case, there is yeah, some shears inside. You can use those on the beehive and then yeah, the honeycomb is ejected at the bottom. This also works, so it's the same setup even for honey. In case we got glass bottles in there, we can also take yeah, honey out. But here we need to make sure that the dispenser is completely filled. So all the slots are filled um, with glass bottles. In this case, glass bottle is filled and then ejected because there's no space left anymore. And then Hopper yeah, can pick it up. So what I have in mind is actually, instead of having a separate farm for honeycomb and honey, because right now with this setup, as you can see, it would be a quite tricky. You could, you could technically try to get a mix uh, in there and then get some honeycomb and some glass bottles but I basically want to switch completely between only getting honey and only getting honeycomb. So that means the dispenser here needs to be empty. So yeah, what I have in mind is in case this is full we reach signal strength 5 and then from a central storage we either request some shears or a glass bottle that will be used on the beehive. But as you can already see we need to yeah, switch it up a little bit. The Spencer on top, which, which is quite convenient here, won't work anymore because in case we get this one glass bottle from the central storage that is getting filled, yeah, we can't really take out the honey uh, from, from this position unless we glitch a minecart somehow into the beehive. Uh, but it's a bit of <laughs> much effort. So I feel like in case we want to make this tileable, so I have one farm right next to the other, we need to put the dispenser below the beehive. And then in case we get um, honeycomb, it will be ejected out the front. And in case we get yeah, the honey bottle, we need to have a hopper below, so it will be picked up. Okay, then we also need to resupply the dispenser uh, with the glass bottle or the shears each time. So that's really the idea, we also put the shears in and then take them out immediately again, put them back into the central storage. So we can probably have a refill like this, have two droppers, and then here a hopper line, and coming yeah, this way would be a, a dropper line where we put in either a glass bottle or the shears. So like this. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of the redstone here. 
then we still need to take yeah, an output from the uh, beehive there with the comparators. Only in case we get a signal strength of five, this hopper here below will be unlocked and then is able to take out the glass bottle or the shears from this dropper line. Okay, so this would be the idea. So here we need still the comparator. I'm gonna grab a glass block or I have it. Okay, and put it right here. So we can power those um, droppers from above just using a, an observer line like this. We power stuff below with QC. You can see if we put in yeah, one item there, send a signal through, it would actually end up here in the dropper. Alright, and yeah, by default, this hopper would be locked only if we yeah, actually yeah, need it, it will be unlocked. Okay, so we still need some signal strength of 5 there. A redstone torch down. Let's see from on top. 1, 2, 3, 4, and go down. Signal strength 5. Then we can put down some repeaters there. Yeah, and now this will be unlocked in case it's filled with honey. Alright, then additionally we need to send a signal to the main storage that one of the beehives is now filled with honey. So in case we have this hideable, we can just have a redstone line here below. So in case you imagine, got all of those. Then if any of those um, yeah, basically has honey in front, then this, li this line will be powered and we can yeah, send an item through this dropper line. Okay, then the glass bottle or the shears would end up in this dropper, but we need them in the dispenser there. So we need to at least power this. So then it will be sent up into the dispenser, just in case we have some shears there. So if you power from below, first two droppers get activated, but we still need to trigger the dispenser somehow. And yeah, we can do that from above here in a tidable setup. I have just some downwards facing observers there. Alright, so yeah, there's just a small issue. In case we send the item or the shears into the dispenser, the hopper would pick them up almost immediately. So we could have an extra yeah, redstone on the side here to lock the hopper somehow. But there's also a way around. In case we trigger everything in one tick, uh, the honey bottle or I guess the shears will be used before they're actually picked up by the hopper. And that requires yeah, a correct update order. So we basically need to power the two droppers and then the dispenser all in the same tick. So we can achieve that by using a repeater here at the bottom and an observer here at the top. The observer updates always after the repeater. Okay, so in case we got some shears in there, Throw those out and just trigger this line here so it's all in the same tick. Then we got the right update order and we will yeah, get the shears out and also some honeycomb in front. There we go. Got ejected to the side. Later we also need to put some blocks there. And then the only way the honeycomb can be ejected is in front. Then we can run a hopper minecart below to pick up that honeycomb. Unfortunately, yeah, it can't be picked up directly by a hopper below because we need the dispenser there. All right, so this would be the setup, the basic one. All the, the redstone almost, yeah. Just need to put this together. You can chain this, it's tidable. What we still need then, of course, is the central storage where we request the glass bottles or the shears from. So there needs to be a switch as well. All right, there we go. We got the yeah, setup here with in total 16 beehives in two sections of eight. So that's what I do in general also with the simple um, yeah, honey or honeycomb farms. Every ninth block would be a divider. Because if you just have beehive next to beehive for like 40 or 50 blocks, then sometimes it happens that the bees tend to go towards one direction and clump in, in one corner and wouldn't pathfind back to their hive. So that's why I usually do this. Yeah, also with the normal simple yeah, honey or honeycomb farm, every eight blocks, uh, nine blocks, there's a divider in between. But not entirely sure if maybe 10 or 12 blocks would also be fine. Okay, um, yeah, we got the setup already. 
So here's basically the dropper line that supplies us with the, the bottlers or the shears. And we got a storage right next to it. So also want a nice interface here in the front. This would be an expandable storage for more glass bottles if needed. And also more shears if needed. But I think two double chests should be enough. Especially with the glass bottles. I can use the auto crafting table, which is a modded feature. So technically one double chest would already be enough for me. Um, but yeah, in vanilla, you could have more glass bottles. This just means you, you, you can run the farm longer before you gotta refill it again. So you would have a storage for the honey bottles on the side. You can craft everything in, into honey blocks and then you can put the empty bottles back in here. Okay, um, you can already show it working. So basically we got a switch. It can be activated by clicking an old block to swap between honeycomb and honey. So we do also have um, indicator lights there. And the way the switch works is we push those blocks here back and forth. So that means the observers can only power one of the droppers. So in this case we got the glass bottle selected. So this dropper yeah, will be powered and one glass bottle will be shot into this dropper here. And then we power the whole dropper line and send it through. Okay, yeah, and then we also have the, the correct setup here for powering the bottom droppers there and the dispenser. Okay, I can place a beehive there. So this has a honey level of five. This is also the mini hut feature we were talking about earlier. Okay, then would immediately um, turn on this hopper clock. Basically get an output here and yeah, send the signal through to request one glass bottle. Okay, let's quickly do it. Oh, I think the, the comparator actually doesn't get updated. Uh, let me do that. Okay. There we go. Uh, we actually got two signals because we just have a clock running there. So sometimes multiple glass bottles would be shot through, but it's all right. Okay, then yeah, in this case, the honey bottle um, will be picked up by the hopper and put into the minecart. So we need this minecart anyway to collect the honeycomb that lands on top of the flowering azalea leaves. Okay, and then we'll just end up here in this hopper. Right, so that's basically the whole farm already, except we don't have the, the storage yet. So here we've got actually a, also a yeah, nice interface for that. Um, where should we put the storage? I think it's kind of nice to look at the honey farm as well. We should maybe not obstruct that view. Maybe we could put the storage on this side. This isn't as nice to look at. Yeah. So it would then be a directly, I'm gonna use the auto crafting table, um, directly a storage for honey blocks and honeycomb. Honeycomb yeah, is quite versatile for you know, putting it on copper, making candles. So I don't think I'm gonna add an auto crafter to get, for example, um, honeycomb blocks. The honeycomb block is actually also you know, kind of a wasted opportunity. I feel like, okay, it's a nice decorative block, but it has, doesn't have any extra properties. I think it should also have something special, but yeah, definitely a couple of ideas around. I feel like it should also be special somehow. All right, farm is now fully finished. I added the storage here on the side. There was actually a question the last time if I'm using any non vanilla features, and if I do, I should mention it. It's something I do. Usually, so the, the dirt farm we made in the last episode is completely vanilla. No modded feature was used. So the only modded features we have really there is stuff um, in case we can't get an item a certain way. So Since there's already three different ways to get dirt, we don't need a modded feature for dirt. Uh, same goes for the honey farm. The only non-vanilla feature that I use is really um, the auto crafting table. But that's something yeah, we were talking about already. One of the main reasons really to have an auto crafting table is actually just for the honey bottle into honey crafting. Not sure if you guys done that ever, but I've spent two hours once just crafting honey bottles into honey blocks and it's just not time well spent. <laughs> so I don't want to do that anymore. That's why we, we added the auto crafting table. Okay, let's maybe actually follow what happens with the items. So in case we do get honey bottles or empty glass bottles, so all the leftover Empty glass bottles that we sometimes send through the system uh, would just end up here. Will be picked up by the hopper minecart and go into 
this item elevator there. Okay, here we pick them up again. First thing we filter out are the honey bottles. They will be sent up to the crafting system. But we can probably also direct the water stream and send it to the storage here first because the auto crafting system that I have here, that's something I actually just had in my schematics folder, uh, actually requires some of the containers to be filled with honey blocks. Seems like we need 15 and a half stacks of honey blocks before we can actually use that. So we can probably in Fiddler just redirect it to here, craft those honey blocks, and then we can use it. Um, yeah, anyway. This crafting system is also a bit overpowered, it's hopper speed. Then there's the empty glass bottles that are left over. They go into the same chest again, and then just go through the rest of the, the hopper chain. The next thing we sort out would be honeycomb. Goes into the chests here. Then here we sort out the glass bottles, just to refill it. Yeah, in case once we have the auto crafting system, it's basically just a closed loop. We never need to refill this. And then everything that's left over, this can only be shears at this point. I would just go in here. Okay, I uh, also added an on-off switch. So we can directly control the fence gates there and release the bees, turn the farm on. And in case the storage is filled up completely, there's also comparators here to snake around a little bit. They would also then turn off um, the farm. So this would otherwise break actually the farm. Some of the stuff is overflowing, but that's why we have the safety switch. Okay, yeah, I don't want to overdo it. So the only thing we could run out of now would be shears. Could technically also add an auto crafting system for that. And then we could add an iron farm to make shears. Uh, but let's not overdo it. I think if you fill up two double chests with shears, I think each, each shears um, has 250 durability or something like that. That lasts a long while. Uh, storage is probably filled up before we run out of shears. So... Let's just build this in survival. Oh, there's actually one important detail I completely forgot about. You ideally want to build this farm either in the end dimension or even better in the nether dimension that we can chunk load. Because the bees at night time won't leave the hive. But there is no night time in the end and nether dimension, so they keep working. So the farm produces more in, in the nether dimension if AFK at the same time. Now, of course, you know the problem with the nether. Unless you play on Psycraft, you don't have water sources. Oh. And now there's already a lot of stuff. Oh man. I kind of don't want to redo it. I mean, it's not like it wouldn't work at all in the overall dimension. I think I'm just gonna build it there. Yeah, this is such a custom build anyway with the auto crafting. But I feel like it's actually a pretty interesting concept here. Maybe I'll make a vanilla version that uses dropper elevators and the normal storage without auto crafting. Okay, um, let's just build this in the overworld somewhere. Yeah, I already made it nether spawn proof. Here I wanted to use the um, the nether water blocks that are spawn proof in the nether. Yep. Can also do it the normal way then. Back in survival, good progress has been made. So we definitely have enough bees now. And I also gathered the materials for building the farm. So I decided to Build it right over here, at the main area. So we spent a lot of time here anyway, then it can just run on the side. Okay, and I got the 16 beehives. Just gonna place them right next to blocks here, so the bees can enter, but don't leave. Yep, I'll place them down here. All 16 of those, and then just mine it with select touch. Okay, should probably also collect the honeycomb. Still need some for the filters. Okay.
Now building this went very smooth, only took 45 minutes. In case you want to expand the farm, this would also be no problem at all. So in case you come to the conclusion the farm is maybe not fast enough because it's built in the overworld, you can yeah, just easily add more modules in the back, so this would be no problem. Okay, so Tyrant released the bees. Um, instead of flicking the lever, I can maybe just punch out the redstone torch real quick, so we can see all the bees coming out immediately. There we go. Right, they also now all fully grown up. Yeah, it's just now waiting time, so we'll probably take like 5-10 minutes, then we can get... Yeah, I'm gonna just close this real quick again and turn it on properly. A switch here in front, there we go. Yeah, and then we can get the first uh, honeycomb. So I'm gonna run the honeycomb from first in case we ever need yeah, more beehives, in case we want to expand this in the back. And then I'm gonna switch it to uh, um, honey bottles. I also redirected the water stream here at the top, so it doesn't go into the auto crafter, it goes directly here into the storage. As I said, we're gonna craft all the, the honey blocks first, so we can run the auto crafter. So there we go, get the first honeycomb now. Also the shears uh, dispensed into the water again. And should be sent back to the storage. Oh, seems like it's working fine. So after filling the filter, also the first honeycomb arrived in the storage now. I guess that's the moment where we can actually swap over to honey bottles. See if this is also working fine. So I put a full double chest of glass bottles in there. Yep, and it's immediately working. We're getting the first honey bottles. Perfect. Okay, it's probably gonna fill up the filter first. And then it will be sent to storage. Okay, now we got some honey bottles also arriving at the storage. There we go. Okay, and now it's just a matter of waiting. Of course, we can also speed up the process, so in case I just make the AFK sleeping setup, then a farm should be as fast as if you would have built in an adder. So it's also definitely a possibility here. Right, so yeah, dual honey and honeycomb farm is working now. Really convenient here with the switch. Of course, if you really look at it, then it uh, would have been probably less effort to just build two farms, to be completely honest. But I think that's just also yeah, kind of a fun build, something different. I mean, I'll just build the normal honey farm uh, every time we, we play <laughs> a survival world. It would also get a bit boring. So I really like this. Hope you enjoyed this as well. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.